Well, I think there are a number of lessons that the church around the world should learn from the church in the United States in its engagement with homosexuality. First is, don't repeat the period of uh, prejudice, of hatred, of a kind of bigotry toward homosexuals that was true of many churches, many Christians, in the 1980s when the AIDS epidemic broke out and was at that point pretty tightly associated with homosexuality, the church responded horribly. Uh, rather than be uh, a vessel of mercy, rather than take um, a cup of water to neighbor, uh, that certainly happened in some places, but by and large the church's response um, was, was one of misunderstanding, one of fear, one of um, real, real bigotry. So number one, do not repeat that mistake. Number two, uh, I think you, you want to not just oppose homosexuality, but I think you also want to oppose heterosexual uh, sins uh, and, and heterosexual abuses that weaken the family and weaken society. So the, the Church of the United States, I think, could be charged with being hypocritical uh, in its opposition to homosexuality but in its near silence on divorce and adultery and fornication and uh, other kinds of sexual sins. Uh, I think the, the U.S. church has grown up on those issues a bit. I do think, at least in the circles that I run in, you hear a lot more teaching on those things than you would say even homosexuality. Um, but, but there have been places and times where the church has been liable for that kind of uh, inconsistency or hypocrisy. Um, the, the third lesson we might draw from the U.S. in this engagement with um, the issue of homosexuality is pretty early in the 90s, it seems to me, mid-90s, late 90s, early 2000s, the conversation began to change from the sexual behavior in question and whether or not we ought to make that normative, whether or not we ought to make that define homosexuality as good and um, a, a human flourishing, move pretty quickly from that kind of conversation to a conversation about rights and a conversation about fair treatment, particularly when the church was maybe reeling a bit in seeing this hypocrisy and, and seeing its sin against our homosexual friends in its unkindness. The, the rights language moved to center stage, and along with the rights language came an emphasis not, again, on the sexual behavior, but on um, the equality of homosexual love as compared to heterosexual love. And so the question was, why can't I love whom I want to love? And rhetorically, that's a very powerful question. But you see what it does. It, it shifts the ground from, do we want to normalize this, this sexual behavior to something more nebulous um, as, as love? And love as a matter of personal preference. Um, and so I think the church, in its engagement with homosexuality, needs to keep bringing the conversation back to the sexual behavior itself and asking moral questions about the rightness of that behavior. And is that the behavior, is that the sexual act that we want to teach in our society as good and right? Do we want to raise our children to believe that that sexual act is equivalent to uh, a man and a woman, a married man and a woman, uh, enjoying sexual intercourse as God has designed it. Um, now, in the United States, that's going to be seen as backwards and unkind. I wrote a blog post on this recently and got all the flack that I expected to get back from it. Um, that's a hard sell in the United States right now. But I noticed just this past week here in Zambia in the paper um, a, a brief reporting on a trial that's in the courts right now. Uh, where two men have been accused of homosexual behavior. Uh, and I think the, the crime here is, is, is a crime against nature. Well, you're using a moral law argument. You're using an argument from nature about the nature of our bodies and the nature of sexual activity and what it's for. I think if you keep the conversation there in a clear but loving way, um, then I think you have a chance of seen a different outcome than what we've seen in the States. The last thing I would say is, if you can keep the United States president out of Africa touting the importance of homosexuality and homosexual rights and 
requiring AIDS organizations in Africa to in some way endorse homosexuality before receiving aid or as a, as a, as a requirement for aid, um, then I think you'll I think you'll stand a chance of uh, holding the ground uh, according to the morality of the land.